Two bros. Minus two. Wait, three minus one. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord. Off to a great start. Yeah. It's your boy, Shout out. Cy, and Norn Dithis is with us. We're missing Conrad. Just, can we just say Chad? Can we oh, just... we can. We can. But then you'd have to change your logo. You'd have yeah. to somehow edit that um, logo that say Chad from now on. That's true. It wouldn't be that hard, to be fair. It wouldn't. You'd have to change your YouTube channel name, too, though, because that also gets... Because I know when you're talking, it says you, but when I hear you talking, it says Norn Dithis in the corner. So... Hmm. So, you know, fuck Sai for trying to keep it all, you know, even. But no, nope. I just wants to, like, make up his own YouTube name and then use his <coughs> real name. And... <laughs> all right. Anyways. Anyways, shout out to uh, the dislike we got on our last video. Oh, yeah, that was great. <laughs> Drowned out by two likes from us. Nice. Okay, Audience um... engagement. <laughs> sure. sure. Uh, I really I really don't care if people. I wish we got people that just listened and only straight disliked because then we could at least talk to people about it instead of just talking to the air. Okay. Facts. So one time before I did this thing, and it was only with you too. One of these times I gotta do it with Caleb, but we're doing excuse me what? Where the local buffoon Sai reads an article and I don't know, a buffoon can spot a buffoon kind of thing. So when I read this headline um earlier this week it definitely caught my eye because i was like oh geez this isn't going to surprise me if this is the case so it's an article on newsweek and the headline is john mccain once suggested trump's new secretary of defense patrick shanahan who was the deputy secretary of defense under james mattis and now is the acting one was being a fox in the hen house over ties to boeing and i go oh geez hmm. let me just read this real quick let's see what's good so Trump, Mattis resigned, which you know, and basically was like, hey, I'll give you sufficient amount of time to find your own secretary of defense. Like I am. You know, like he definitely did resign over circumstances that we've never seen before, and it was quite extraordinary, but he still is a soldier and is not just going to be a dick ever to be one just to be one. So he's like, listen, I don't agree with you. I'm resigning because of it, but I will give you till the end of February. I think it was to find a replacement, like sufficient time to vet interview, whatever the heck you need to do. Right. Well, and to properly so Donald, hang on, let me just introduce finish the next oh, person in line. Like you, you have to train these people in the role sure. that they're going to be assuming. There's right. We're we talking about secretary that train, defense right? of the United States military. That turnover needs to be quick or, or long. That turnover yeah. needs to be long. And right. They're, they're, you can't just like the next day wake up and be like, ah, oh, whatever. Anyways. Um, so Trump of course starts hearing and reading things that are like, wow, like we've never seen this before. This makes Trump look bad. Nobody's ever resigned and just explicitly was like, I don't agree with you. Usually they're like, I'm resigning because of family or whatever the heck. But no, he was just like, nah, you suck. I'm resigning. <laughs> so of course Trump doesn't like this and gets really upset. And basically on his own is like, you know what? Nope. We're going to have you pushed out earlier. We're going to put the deputy deputy in on an acting um, basis starting earlier than you wanted to, because I don't like this. This is bad press for me and I'm Donald Trump and I hate that January. So, 1st. <laughs> so yeah. So this Patrick Shanahan guy is going to start on January 1st. And the, the reason that, there can be a lot of reasons why I read an article or you read an article or anybody reads an article and you excuse me what it you're just like, but for this one specifically, it's the whole idea that Trump was going to drain the swamp, right? And I guess we can haggle over what drain the swamp might have meant, but I know it to mean um, getting rid of conflicts of interest and corruption, especially and having a government that's more efficient, maybe even smaller as, as someone who's a left left leaning person, I'm willing to say maybe even smaller, but, but more efficient in the sense that it's not wasting money, giving money directly back to benef benefiting the people, you know, stuff like that. That's draining the swamp. Okay. Not putting, and I, I go on to read in this article, a former high executive with Boeing, Okay, who that that obviously, and I have to say it out loud, even though we all know what I'm talking about, that competes for military contracts up the wazoo in so many ways is now in charge of being the Secretary of Defense for the military. Like, and the headline itself talks about how, um, I can't remember when this was, but, um, back, I think, um, 
this was after Trump took over the White House. Yeah. And after Mattis was in the position. Um, I, I think that it was when um, Patrick Shanahan was being moved into the deputy, the undersecretaries or the deputy position um, where McCain made a comment that was like, dude, you're a former executive of Boeing. Like, you know, I have to make sure that you're not just going to come in and be like super biased towards Boeing and like super biased towards like privatizing um, production just because it helps profits of the company you used to work for, right? Like, come on. So I just, I, these articles, excuse me, what me, because it's, it's, it's just once another thing that blows my mind that anybody bought in or believed that Trump was going to drain any swamp or do anything that helped anybody but himself. I don't understand why people believe this. Trump doesn't care. Trump will easily move someone out like James Mattis, who this person on the left and who this veteran on the left has strong respect for and like liked that pick was a big fan of that pick, even though I do not like Trump. You're going to easily shove him aside and and just basically tarnish him and smear him because he make, makes you look bad. And and you ran on draining the swamp and being this like person and you just stick former executives of military contracting companies in these positions. Like, what the fuck? Like, please, someone find me someone who still says Trump does things for others and not himself. I want to talk to that person. It just frustrates me, man. Now, I'd be very surprised. Yeah. To know that Trump is actually aware of um, that's the point, though. Then what is never his name? The Patrick Shanahan. Yeah, his background, right? <clears throat> I don't think Trump's that involved, but yeah, I mean, still the point. It's very obvious that he slowly came to realize the terms that Mattis left on. It bruised his ego, and being the petulant individual that he is, was like, right. "Fuck this! Get this guy out! Do whatever we need to do, and get the next guy in." Even though. Right. You're only damaging your own administration in the process by doing that. Mm -hmm. yep. And like I said, it's the bigger picture that makes me, excuse me, what articles like this. It's the bigger picture of people who still believe to this day that like Trump is their champion and, only, and, and doesn't care about only things Trump, but actually cares about like everybody and like what's best for everyone. Like, no. And also the bigger picture that makes me, excuse me, what this is, his poll numbers continue to stay where they are. It's incredible. It is freaking breathtaking. The political brilliance of Donald Trump. You know, I know a lot of people will mock him and maim him um, for having low numbers since the beginning of the presidency compared to other presidents. But those numbers have stayed the same, even through all of this craziness. So I've talked about how that's political power in itself before. And it's. Yeah, I always take that with a grain of salt. It's crazy. So. I think there's a good portion of people on the right who are still diehard Trump supporters, but I think there's also a good portion of people on the right who don't want to admit that they fucked up. We'll see um, a lot of a lot, a lot if the economy continues to do worse, a lot will a lot will tell us what it really is in the poll numbers then. Mm -hmm. Because if the economy crashes and his poll numbers really don't move that much, then I would I would I would I would be willing to at that moment Proclaim Donald Trump as the most brilliant, brilliant American politician in history, at least like among the most brilliant, because no <laughs> matter what brilliant. happens, the whole country could be burning down and people he plays politics so well that people have this trust and belief in him that literally he can do no wrong. And that is political brilliance. That is what it is. That is such power in its own right. It is. So yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it brilliance, though. It, it, on some level, it okay. Well, I think he's inherited he brilliance, but but it's not it's not stupid. The man knows what he's doing. The man knows the power he wields. <sighs> um, is he careless with it because he's a child and selfish? Sure, but like, dude, you don't get to where you are because you don't know what the hell you're doing. Just saying, that's all. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to call it brilliance, that's fine. But there's definitely something there. Okay, <laughs> so. I would say that the right experiences more a sense of like diehard loyalty in terms of their base than the left does. I agree. And there's reasons for that. There are. Um, but I would not chalk them up to Trump's quote unquote brilliance. But that's just me. You could call it whatever you want. I'm calling it brilliance. If you don't want to call it that, that's fine. As long as you sure. agree that there is power in what he's done. Oh, absolutely. Doing. Yeah. So you can call it whatever you want. He could shoot a person on Fifth Avenue and his oh, would still get up behind him. Sure, sure, sure. All right. Move on to Cyril's article. So I read this article on The Intercept. It's written by Glenn Greenwald, who apparently does a lot of this like counterculture free speech issue things. Um, but anyways, 
Um, it's about a t- Texas speech pathologist who she is originally from Palestine and she lost her job because she wouldn't sign a pledge to not support anyone who boycotts Israel. So basically, um, I think more specifically in the article, they wrote it as she didn't sign like a pro, she, she would, she refused to sign like a pro Israel pledge. Um, and I just, the first thing I thought of when I was reading this article, um, so by the way, she's not, she even says there's a video that that accompanied it and, um, whether you want to believe her or not, whatever, but in the video, they, you know, she's recorded as saying like, she's not that she's not really a huge activist. She's not really into that stuff, into that like huge activism stuff. She's just someone who's got a regular job and a regular mom, but who, who definitely, um, bases her economic choices on things that she believes. Um, and I think that if you scrub away all the labels from that, if you just described to most people, Hey, it's a mom who's working, who is not an activist, but chooses to make economic decisions based off of things that she believes and hopes that the world will become a better place in her eyes. I think most people will be like, Oh yeah, that's great. Right. Would you agree with that? Chad, would you say, Oh, that sounds great. Like good for her. Yeah. Generally. I mean, you can't, you sure. can't fault somebody for sticking by their conviction. Right. So the first thing that hit me reading this is it's just, it's easy to be pro free speech when like most people agree with you on an issue, when you're in a culture where everyone's like nodding their head, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But it's, it's harder. It's harder to be pro free speech when, when someone disagrees with you. Um, so I know, and, and, and Chad, you, you spoke of this before we recorded a little bit about how it's surprising the amount of States and specifically what States have signed, Basically, if you want state support or you want to work in state government or contract with state government at all, you have to sign something that says you're pro-Israel. Um, well, New not York included. Israel as much as well, like sure. you're not going to boycott Israel. Not going to boycott Israel. There you go. Not going to boycott their economy. Right. Um, so that's that's a better way to describe it. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of surprising how many, states. and it's surprising some of the states, including New York. Um, New York was the first. I didn't. I don't. I don't remember reading that. Yeah, that's what uh, it says. One of the first states to impose such repressive restrictions on free expression was well, free expression was New York in 2016. Democratic Governor Andrew Cuomo issued an executive order directing all agencies under his control to terminate any and all business with companies or organizations that support a boycott of Israel. Yeah. Wow. So I also wrote. That's crazy. Also, that's like two wow. years that's ago. That's crazy. But oh yeah, well Cuomo is a freaking. He 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 goes into a cocoon every couple of years and comes out a different butterfly. But look, I, I wrote down here too. Um, it's, it's important to separate speech and action here. Like, dude, if you have, if you have some idea or I don't know, like if you just have, even if you have an, a hateful idea that doesn't direct anyone like effectively, like it doesn't affect anyone violently or anything like that. Like if you just have this idea that you want to spread, even if it's hateful, um, like it's it's dude, I don't care. Like obviously this article doesn't have a hateful message, right? I don't um not necessarily. She just doesn't really like some of the policies that Israel implements and so she feels like she wants to but I just I don't it just it just feels like we do a really bad job of equating free speech and and we're human beings, so I get it, but we do a bad job of equating free speech on all sides, right? Like everyone's Everyone should be able to, especially like we live in a society now where economics are so strong that we can dictate based on our own decisions who we want to support. And that's good and powerful. That actually, in my opinion, relieves a lot of pressure on like a lot of violence that would have otherwise happened or has happened in the past. Right. So now like you'll hear like, um, the whole Governor Flynn thing before Trump actually took the presidency. Obama, right before Trump took over, you know how Obama placed sanctions on Russia for interfering, interfering right before he came out of office, and then Flynn was on the phone and got in trouble for it, for lying about yeah. it. Um, but that's what you hear nowadays. When when a, another nation when another nation is doing like crappy things, we can just put economic sanctions sanctions on them, and that relie- that has relieved a lot of I think what used to be just like we go to war over. So a lot of violence and stuff is cut back by being able to like place economic sanctions on countries and pressure that way, which is awesome. And we should all be able to do that individually as well. Like it is, that is not violence. That is just us 
having the power of a modern society to be able to pick and choose who we support based on, you know, our ideals, which is perfectly fine. Like I just, there's a huge difference between, um, flying over and like shooting flying over to palestine and like joining these like like weirdo rebels and people who perpetuate violence which is always wrong you know as opposed to just like hey being a mom in texas and wanting to like buy things that might put pressure on is israel's government to come up with a solution in the area it's just ridiculous and you know if 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 we want to call ourselves if 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 we want to say we're the country for free free speech and, and freedom um then we've got to we've got to like do that for everybody. It's just I'm surprised really this hasn't been challenged. Man. How has this not been challenged in court? Like this is such a bizarre because, thing. Because because there's no political capital for it. There's no not that there should be political capital that affects things in courts, but come on, let's be real. Like the, like societies can choose their ideals and societies can choose whether or not to do certain things and I don't know, I think most people if you ask them directly in america i think still 80 to 90 percent even of people if you said do you support israel palestine they'd be like israel when the right answer is who gives a shit <laughs> like, i'm not sure if that's the right answer but I, sure. well, that's fine but i think you know yeah i just i i'm so taken aback taken aback by this how i it's just it's yeah what why what, i think i think what prompted Cuomo in particular, but at the very least, these yeah. other states to feel the need, the need to write this in the law. Was this a widespread problem? Also, what do you mean by problem? Like what problem? Well, quote unquote problem as in like businesses refusing to do business with Dude, Israel. It's, it really, it, uh, no, this it's feels political. This feels wholly political. There's got to be based on the fact that we're a Christian nation. Um, well, there's just, that, and I think there's got to be me off is we, we live in this era where our leadership, some of our leadership won their right to power by slinging slogans like America first, but then literal Americans want to choose to boycott economically certain things without perpetuating any violence, just choose things based on their own freedom of choice. And we don't let them. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that doesn't, doesn't make, make sense. Any sense. It's now, not Israel. Be... It's not. It's not America first tied with Israel. I don't give a fuck. It's America first. So Go to ahead. be fair, the one in New York State was addressing businesses that would not do business with Israel. That New York State wouldn't do business with those businesses. Whereas the one in Texas is but this is cares? an individual making their own individual economic decisions. But they this have is a made to... up problem. Who cares? Right. And, and to your point, Chad, why do they, why did they write this now? If, if Cuomo can actually, this is why at some point, maybe we'll have some clout and collateral and we can actually invite people on to answer questions that we have. But if Cuomo was on here right now and gave us specific reasons as to why that might be harming innocent civilians or doing this or that. Okay. We're here to listen, but it, it, just blanket. It doesn't fucking make sense. And I don't, this doesn't. is a made up problem. Like who cares? This is who outside cares? money. I, I would put. I'm saying. I would 100% bet that this is outside money coming in, probably from um, pro-Israeli groups or even groups in Israel themselves trying yeah. to make this a thing. It's just a made-up problem. Also, and, and I shared with you my talk. Oh, go ahead, Chad. I was gonna say, if I was a school contractor, I, I mean, I wouldn't lose my job over this. I would sign that piece of paper, and then I would keep making my own personal economic decisions. What are they gonna check my fucking receipts? Or even, how about you don't even sign it? You just turn it in and say, "Here you go." <laughs> like, is everybody looking for the signatures in a school district of every single employee? I bet you they just file that shit away. They just say, "Oh, thanks," and they just Maybe. file it away. This lady's wearing when the a hijab. The lawsuit comes though. up, then they pull up and they take a look at it. Mm, this lady's wearing a hijab. I bet you that gets handed in in Texas, and they're like, "Check and see if she signed it." Yeah, check and see if she signed it. That's but I would problem. just sign it and then I keep making right. my own personal decisions. Like, go I fuck agree. yourself. And then the minute that they fire you, you say, "Oh, we have a constitution that you might have made this law, but guess what? The constitution's older." And more binding, and so I'm going to take you to court. And it's that simple. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you. That's how it feels to me. But so I, like, I want to bring this up too. Well, good for her for we taking easily... on the the battle. Yeah, sure, absolutely. First of all, it takes a lot of courage to do that. I mean, I would um, just keep my job. You know, but what we I'm could. Saying? I would yeah, make it. And, and just I, I would. You're right. Let's talk about what we each would do. I would do what you would do, Chad. I would keep. I would just sign it. I don't give a crap, and just keep making the same economic decisions. Like, what are they going to do in my house? And then, um, 
So something that always bothers me, it doesn't bother me, but we can always get caught up in, in the fun nuanced debate of free speech and like how I see hypo, you know, hypocritical things on some sides when they say, Oh, free speech. And they don't, you know, support it for all sides, but there's actual adverse action to like stupid shit that we do. Okay. So listen to this. The bill's language is so sweeping that some victims of Hurricane Harvey, which devastated Southwest Texas in late 2017, were told that they could only receive state disaster relief if they first signed a pledge to never boycott Israel. That demand was deeply confusing to those hurricane victims in desperate need of help, but who could not understand what their views of Israel and Palestine had to do with their ability <laughs> to receive assistance from their state government. That is correct. So, I didn't even see that. Bravo to the to the. I don't even know who this writer is. I'm not trying to say I always agree with him, but like bravo on this article and specifically to this paragraph that that highlights it's always th there are consequences to stupid shit that you do. You there's a lot of times I feel like, especially in this day and age with this administration on the federal level, th that things are done for wholly political reasons. They're actually not factual at all. They're fucking lies. Not even that they're lies. They're just done for political capital. Okay. Mm. But a lot of those times when you do stupid shit like that, there's actual consequences. Okay, in this case, you had Americans who don't give a shit about Israel or Palestine, it sounds like. Some of them were like, what the fuck does this have to do with me trying to rebuild <laughs> right. here in America? It's just stupid. And, yeah, I mean, and, I, and, if, if I'm a Hurricane Harvey victim, I'm signing that just so I can get help. You know what I mean? Like... And to be and honest, those, and, and those people on those people on the right, which it's not the whole right. I never want to like paint every anybody with a huge brush, but there's people on the right who praise these laws being passed. I want them to sit in front of me, read that paragraph and tell me what they think. They're probably just going to say, oh, there should be waivers. It should do. It should be better. But come on, yo, there are negative consequences sometimes of these things that, that mm. have real life. You know, go ahead. I mean, this is, as far as I'm concerned, and, and to be fair, I don't know entirely where I stand in terms of Israel, Palestine, whatever. That's a very complicated situation. Um, this isn't even like an Israel issue. This is just, this really is just a First Amendment issue. This makes yeah. no sense. Why is this happening? And interestingly enough, I didn't have any, I don't even know how I feel about Israel, Palestine. I, I had no intention of talking about that. <laughs> right, no, it's exactly. It's just a holy free speech article. And it's just bizarre. It's so weird. Yeah. I don't get who is driving this. Why is this so widespread? Especially when nobody's paying attention to this because citizens clearly aren't that concerned with it. Why? Why is this being written in the le legislation? Who's driving this? Who's putting their thumb on the scale? It's definitely money coming from somewhere. 100%. Mm -hmm. These are political favors being done. I am the kind of person that appreciates in this day and age that when we <clears throat> when we have disagreements or we have different viewpoints the worst thing that happens is we denigrate each other publicly with words and needle each other with words and call each other snowflakes and it happens on both sides as opposed to what used to happen back in the day war and people dying okay <laughs> things have gotten better um and i and i was alluding to that earlier too like like it's just I, I, I do appreciate the fact that we live in a time where the worst that happens is we call each other snowflakes and, you know, at least at least we're not like warring over the dumbest crap. Um, I've watched many a historical documentary, which was like this dude's wife fucked this dude and two cities went to war. And you're like, God damn, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> what in the world? Um, but we still have a lot we can do better on, obviously. So, well, well I mean, I, ask yourself, will human beings ever fi be able to fix the fact that they're snowflakes or that they disagree now? So, well, oh, especially, when, especially if we keep existing online like we do. Right. Um, on we go. On we go acting like we care about free speech and then denigrating the other side. On yeah, we go. This is no going to get challenged, though. There's <laughs> what this is 100 percent going to get challenged. There's yeah, no definitely. way that this, especially when articles like this are coming to light. It's going yeah. to get challenged, and it's going to get shot down. This is absolutely I, it, it should. monumentally stupid. Don't, don't say it's stupid. going. It yeah. should get shot down. Regardless of your politics, regardless of your views of Israel, this absolutely needs to be these, shut this, down. Yeah, this is one of those legal things where some people who are partisan outside the court system who are just commentators or um, people like that, they like get their panties all up in a bunch, but people who might be on the right, when this 
when it comes to like judges who are more conservative thinking, like they will come down on no, no, no free speech. Like I, I have trust in right leaning justices making decisions on free speech. I don't have trust in right leaning um, commentators and partisans. <laughs> They seem to be a little more crazy. Oh, know? I see what you're saying. I sure. guess that's their shtick, and a lot of a lot of them make money off it. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like when this goes to the court, th there's a reason why when you say it goes to the courts, it'll get shot down. Even though we do have a court system that's dominated by both sides of mm -hmm. of the thought spectrum, right? It's because we know that people on the right side of the thought spectrum also apply that to everybody, not just people that they agree with. Okay, and that's nice. And this will. You're right. This should get shot down. So. It's interesting that you say that because uh, traditionally speaking, free speech is a liberal idea. Um, traditionally, yes, but liberalism speaking. is right wing. Traditionally speaking, right? Classic classical liberalism is like free everything, like free, 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 free market, uh, including markets. By the way, uh, liberal and economics are not the same today. When you use sure. this, in the same right? Right, I see what you're saying. So, yeah, well, right. I, I would also say that that just free speech in general has existed on the left side of that spectrum in America for a while before now it's starting to get more associated with the right. I mean, if you think about like 40s, 50s, 60s America, there's a lot. There's yeah, a, a big battle there in terms of like being yeah. able to say what you want to say, and that existed on the left side of the political gambit mm -hmm. whatever that was at that time yeah <laughs> and um, now like the people on the right who who identify self-identify as being on the right are like we are the one we're the bastions of free speech we are the the defenders of free speech in america yeah uh, i don't know i just it's interesting to me the way that's changed hands yeah it is anyways on we go on we go all we can do is stay slavishly devoted to actual freedoms. Don't get caught up in the tribal, like, freedom for oh, people obviously. who agree with me. Right. But if you disagree with me, oh, no freedom for you. No, <laughs> that's not that's not how that works. Thank you very much. Freedom at any cost. All right, anyways. NPR. Take, take it away on your article. Yeah. Uh, this happened very recently. Uh, so the title of this one is ICE Continues to Release Asylum Seekers at Public Park in El Paso, Texas. Excuse me, what? For the third day in a row, Immigrations and Custom Enforcement officials released hundreds of migrant asylum seekers at a park near a bus station in downtown El Paso. What? So essentially, um, typically with ICE, they, they tend to have uh, a bit of a communication channel with like the local shelters in Texas. So these people have come across the border. They have their... Um, asylum claims, and they have to be processed by immigration judge judges, right? And it's a very backlogged system right now. And you can't just throw these people back across the border because most of these people aren't even from Mexico. Most of them are from Central America. So we have to properly process these people. Typically, we take them to shelters. You know, we like keep track of these people. They were just dropping busloads of these asylum seekers off at some park. I'm just saying, good luck. And apparently this is somewhat tied to the shutdown recently. Um, that was my first question. Yeah, so an automatic email response from the agency explained, all of ICE's public affairs office officers are out of the office for the duration of the government shutdown. We are unable to respond to media queries during this period because we are prohibited by law from working. So it's got to be somewhat related to the shutdown, but this seems crazy irresponsible to just, drop these people off somewhere and say good luck uh show up at your court date see you later what do, like what what are we doing so yeah I, I don't i don't know there have been a few and i don't know the specifics i'm generalizing but there have been a few times where i've read articles in the trump era where they challenged refugee entry somehow i don't know if it was all refugee entry or but they've definitely challenged the idea of um, cause I think it's a UN statute that everybody that's a part of the UN, like if someone claims asylum, then you have to actually listen to them. You can't you just, can like, sit. you have to process it, right? Yeah. You can't just reject it. Um, so the Trump administration has fought against this 
a few times. I don't know the specifics, but definitely I would say that most of us can agree that they probably don't like the idea of having to process at least. Pro I, I bet you the Trump administration would rather just throw them on their butt right when they catch them back to where they came from and just say, OK, see ya. Like, don't try right. to come back in and keep doing that. Um, and I don't even I don't even know if I'm wholly opposed to that necessarily. But um we do live in this world where we're part of the UN and if we're a part of the UN and we have to follow these laws, no matter how much you fight it, you have to do it. Um, then, then you need to make sure the infrastructure is right. Like how do, how do I say this? Wh whether we agree or not that we have to process asylum seekers, the, uh, the fact is that we have to, and it's already gone through the courts a few times, them trying not to, mm -hmm. which ends up making the whole thing more expensive, right? If you were just processing it and you had the infrastructure in place, and, and it was working kind of the way it should. It's a little more efficient. Nobody's getting held up. Nobody's had, nobody has to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to lawyers to fight things in court. If you just went with it because you knew you had to, it's cheaper than trying to stop it, being told to restart it, pay for the lawyers to fight it. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So like we can argue whether or not we should be a part of the UN. We can argue whether or not we sh um, there should be a law whether that saying that we have to process asylum seekers. But as long as we have to, then don't fuck it up. Like set up the infrastructure, make sure it's right. Like this, this whole, like this whole, I feel like a lot of these issues, Donald Trump tries to come in and, and throw a grenade as far as like, I do what I want. Um, and I get that there was a lot of frustration from people that elected him in office for stuff like that. Um, but a lot of times you'll find there's reasons why these laws are set up the way they are. Right. Like, like we've been through things before and then the laws get set up because we've been through before and we saw the adverse action or whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. It just, uh, if you have to follow that law, then just follow it. Make sure you're doing it right. You know, because otherwise you're just paying for a bunch of lawyers. You're trying to stop the process, but then you're being told you have to restart it. And then that's probably chaotic. And then this probably happens because you have to process them. But then you go, holy fuck, we weren't prepared for this. Now what do we do? You leave them at a park. Which yeah, is just, a, which is just a really, really bad look. Of course it is. Right. And I, like, especially when you leave these people just to fend for themselves. Yeah. Like, what do you think is going to happen? So there's that, of course, there's that stigma. And you typically see it on the right. where like, oh, these are criminals coming over. These are people who are just right. here to, to hurt this country. But if you leave them just nowhere with nothing and they have to wait for a court date to be processed and have their case listened to. I mean, what? That's just weird. It's it's so weird. So there's this, yeah. There's this paragraph right here. Typically, ICE coordinates with local shelters whenever the agency's processing centers are over capacity, but this time ICE failed to contact them in advance and has continued to bust the mostly Central American immigrants to the public park, leaving them completely reliant on generous strangers who have been showing up in droves to distribute food, water, and blankets as temperatures drop into the 40s. What would these people do if p generous people weren't showing up? What would these people do? So incredibly unsurprising that people are willing to step up, though. People always do. I never worry about that. Too many people get caught up in, like, the boogeyman of some scapegoat. Their echo chamber is, like, savaging. And mm -hmm. not that these are actual, like, real people. When, when you know, most of them, you know. So whenever people are, are hurting and someone finds out, I, I, I never worry about them being provided for. That's always good. You know, it's just the look. It's just so stupid. Yeah, but what if they weren't provided for? No, my... I agree. You know what I mean? What would yeah. happen? What would you expect these people to do? Dude, and I just feel like a lot of times we have conversations about stuff like this that don't look at the whole picture. Meaning like, no, you like, I don't know. You just, you, you'll get people that are like, well, okay, it's a bad look. I get it. But um, why can't we just, why can't we just throw them back to where they came from? Like, why do we have to process them? That's the real problem. It's not Trump's fault, right? It's the problem is we can't, just, well, look here, buddy. Unless you have a way to pull out of the UN, which I don't even know what the process would be to do that, or you want to change UN like international law, we're bound by it. And like, you can't just do what you want. Like, I feel you. Um, and by the way, if that is your end goal, then you're going to have to work through the system that we have. Like, you can't right. just throw the system on its head. <laughs> if you don't like the system, then work to change it. You can't just fucking do whatever you want. There's a system for a reason. Is that frustrating? I get it. Fine. It's mm -hmm. sure it's, it is. It's even frustrating for progressives a lot of the time. So, it, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from. Like, it's it's frustrating, but it's there for a reason. If you want to change it, you have to do the right things. You right. I'm to... not I'm hey, not advocating that we have to 100% take in all these people who come here looking right. for 
uh, an asylum claim, but you have to process it and do it responsibly and then send them back to where they came from if their asylum gets rejected. That's how it right. works. You can, but but to just <laughs> release these people carte blanche into some public park in downtown El Paso seems absolutely insane. Yo, also, listen to this from the, the article. Dylan Corbett, who heads a local aid group called Hope Border Institute, told NPR that one of the ICE authorities present at the scene, so I guess there, were, well, there was one at the scene, said, yeah. I have a heavy heart. I'm a human being, but I'm following orders. Okay, <laughs> following orders? So someone ordered them to just drop people off in the middle of nowhere. Yes. In a park in America. Why? Yep. Also, why are they just being let go in American towns unaccounted for? If they're not even citizens, like, aren't they just illegals then? And you're just releasing them? Well, you're so, just releasing them? <laughs> so as what far as I, as far as I understand, they've, they've been processed in the sense that, um, like they have a court date and then typically what happens is they get held in processing centers, like a place to stay while they're waiting on their court date or they'll go to local shelter. Right, Cause if they lose in court, they have to go back. Exactly. So, but then to just release these people. Just, you you wanna, that's what I'm saying. You wanna, <laughs> you but wanna, you just release them. Right. Can you imagine being a new country? And let's imagine this. You don't speak the language. You have a court date in that country. You don't understand where the fuck you are. You, you don't know the language. You don't, you don't have, have anything. And like, you have to be at a court date. If you miss the court date, you're probably an illegal. Like, dude, what the fuck is going on? So that's what I'm bizarre. saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> do 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 I empathize with people who want to change the system, especially coming from the progressive mindset that I do on a lot of things? I do. Okay, but you can't, if you want to change the system, you have to play the current, at least the current game. You can't mm -hmm. come in there lobbing grenades. If you want to pull out of the UN, a lot of people would be shocked if a president actually wanted to do that. But if you want to, then go win the presidency and do it and make it happen. You know, that's the, that's the point. You can't just fucking do what you want. Then all of this that we've built is abs means absolutely nothing. It means fucking nothing. You can throw one grenade and be like, like, oh, oh, uh, president, it's in, it's written in the constitution. President's not supposed to do more than two terms anymore. Don't care, doing it anyways. Mm. Like, come on, yo, you can't just fucking do that. So, not yeah. that I'm worried about that with him, but God, I was just so gobsmacked by this. I was completely, yeah. Like, it's just, it's wow. it's, it's silly. We have um, a broken system, then clearly. Jesus. We have a broke. We already had a broken system, but what makes it worse is just the unorganized, the unorganized manner in which the Trump administration seems to go through things. Mm. Um, it's not a good trait to just fly by the seat all the time. It's just not like it can be a good trait um, in front of crowds. It can be it can be even a good trait in tense negotiations if you know how to like think on your toes and really make things happen. That is not what this is this is just they're unorganized all the time they just fly by the seat of their pants and by the way by the seat of their pants is by the seat of whatever the, whatever trump wants you know it's not even someone who's like informed this isn't like oh we're flying by the seat of neil degrasse tyson's pants nope we're flying by the seat of donald trump's pants oh my god hang on <laughs> you better fucking hang on it's gonna get bumpy <laughs> <laughs> put your seatbelts right. on ladies and gentlemen um i i wanted to talk about one more thing Stephen Fry. So I saw the Stephen Fry video. By the way, I well, I saw the Stephen Fry video, um, and basically, it's an interview with him where the interviewer asks, "Suppose it's all true, because uh, Stephen Fry is a um, prominent atheist." My bad. Yes, prominent atheist, outspoken. And the interviewer basically asks Fry, "Like, suppose it's all true and God does exist. Um, you know, what would you say to him when you see him in the afterlife?" And when I was watching this video the first time, I wrote, like, to me, this is a typical question a believer might ask an unbeliever because they can't fathom not being in fear and kind of, like, wonder how li others live without it. Mm -hmm. Like, do you think that mom lives in fear of what might happen in the afterlife? I do. I think that's what drives a lot of the decisions that her and people like her might make. Um, I'm not hating on it. I'm just, I'm just pointing out that they, they would even admit a lot of hardcore believers, maybe not even hardcore believers would admit that they don't want to go to hell. Right. And they, they fear hell. Right. And they want to go to the place that they don't fear. So I just feel like there's a place where this question comes because I've gotten this question before when sure. I like will mention that I've never mentioned I'm an atheist. I don't even, I'm not one. I, but I, don't, I just don't know. You're religious is typically what I 
Sure. I just don't know. And I honestly, it's not that I don't care. There's just enough here in the now that can captivate me that I don't need to worry about the imaginary. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but you see, you know what I'm saying? Like there's so no. much to learn and do in, on this planet and in this realm that I don't need to speculate about things that I know I won't see, hear, smell, perceive with my senses here. Um, mm. Anyways, so Stephen Fry goes on um, and his answer is really fascinating. So his answer is basically, you know, and most of the time when, when people ask this, it's, I feel like it's a gotcha question from a believer a little bit, not, not disrespectfully, but kind of just like, a, Oh, Hey, like, Oh, what if, like, what would you do? And most people are just kind of like, Oh, well, I don't know. Like, I don't need to answer that question. Cause I mean, I would think I don't need to answer that question. Cause like, it's not going to happen. But so Stephen Fry answers basically by highlighting injustice in our world. That is wholly not the fault of the person mm -hmm. and how that could exist. If a God was to create some sort of entity Right, like why create life that can have suffering without doing anything wrong or doing anything quote unquote to deserve it? I guess we are getting a little subjective there, uh, but how can one exist in a respectful and innocent manner and still have devastation, pain, and many other negative feelings for like yes. no reason? <clears throat> so he essentially, so this is the problem of evil. Like this is something that sort of the religious um, especially the philosophically religious people have not been able to resolve. It's definitely a sticking point for anybody who seriously considers what it means uh, if it if a god were to exist. And I right. to be to be to be fair, it's one of the most damning things I think for me in terms of like why why would it be created this way? If you could create it, if you were this all powerful individual, why would you feel the need to create it this way? Because there's plenty of things that are just horrible in this world that nobody is deserving of. Yeah. Why, why, why does it have to be that way? He opens with bone cancer and children. Really? What's that about? Which I thought was, it's pretty heavy, but you know, I, that's, that was that's good a, though. And you know, I, I like that he started that way because it instantly slaps you in the face and goes, get it's ready for an, something different. And that's what mm -hmm. I loved about it. Once he said that I was captivated the rest of the way. It was like, get ready for something that you weren't expecting, which is nice. You know, like, Oh shit. <laughs> yeah yeah like, here we go grab the popcorn you know so yeah and i i just it is extremely it seems to me that if this if 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 god if a god a single god all knowing all being god did create us then it just feels like um i don't know it just it just it just feels like there's no, we're not similar to, to God. Like why, if you're a being, why would you create something? Um, I just feel selfish, just feel selfish. Why would you create something that can't, that you yourself, if you yourself don't have to go through that pain and suffering, why would you create anything else that would go through any sort of pain and suffering? Well, it's interesting you know, too, it's just, what, what Stephen says yeah. at the end, sort of of that little bit. Cause he says, if I die, and all of a sudden I'm presented in front of these Greek gods. I get it. I understand yeah. it because the Greeks with their gods, they, they didn't pretend that they weren't human. Their gods were human or were. at least they had human faults. And then the, so it, it makes sense that a world that you would create would reflect those same faults. In the legends, like most, if not all gods it, throughout their stories did something that would, you would, label sinful or you know yeah. not right. right not deserving of being a god <laughs> right and he's saying that yeah, that yeah, right. the the world then that they create must mirror the individual that created it it has to but why would it be any other way mm -hmm. um there's a a brilliant quote here from epicurus who was an ancient greek philosopher um and i just posted it in the hangouts oh, that's an ungodly link by the way it's very long um but essentially it, it <laughs> yeah you see that it's because yeah. so it's, it's the google image link but i know i know so essentially it goes like this uh is god willing to prevent evil but not able then he is not omnipotent is he able but not willing then he is malevolent is he both able and willing then whence cometh evil and is he neither able nor willing then why call him god which is one that's always stuck with me um, yeah. especially when i was like 
a lot younger sort of asking my own questions um because it it does. I mean, why would is he able but not willing? Then he is malevolent. Wow, I love that. I love that. Hey, okay. both able and willing. Then whence cometh evil? Then what is evil? Then if he's <laughs> able and willing to stop it, then what? Then why does it happen? Right? And what is? We clearly don't understand what evil is. Then true because that it's not evil right because he doesn't see that as something he needs to step in and stop but i think most of us would say that s suffering is justified if you learn something if you get something or if you did something that caused it but once again that's the catch-22 there are there, there are is, levels of suffering is, in this world that are unacceptable right there's suffering that is deserved and there's suffering that we all can see and kind of yeah. agree like hey that doesn't look deserved at all what's going on here Right, because the, the typical pushback, the typical pushback on this is, well, we have free will. We have free will. God gives us the option of having, well, the option. He gives us free yeah, will. But, sure, but then but you're implying are, that what you're doing is going to cause what you get, which, once again, is right. the 22. <laughs> Bone cancer and children, what's that about? Right. right. Exactly. And exactly. it's just, that doesn't make sense. Um, and I've heard, I've heard, um, I've heard another know, pushback. Sure. Uh, on this where it's you know th there's a there's a, a brief time that you might suffer in this world but what is that compared to the infinite that comes after which is probably the best argument i've heard against evil and it still doesn't doesn't satisfy me mm. say that again so what is that there you might suffer a bit you might suffer a lot in this world but it's only for a, a very brief moment compared to the infinite that oh. you're going to experience afterward <sighs> That's the only yeah. argument I've ever found even somewhat compelling. And that's fine. And that's fine. Um, if that's what's able to get you through life, then oh, then absolutely. Whatever, then get, then then do you? Um, but at the end of the day, our experiences and our fulfillment out of this life might be different. And I believe, and this is me, I believe at the end of the day that when you end, you just end. So <laughs> for me, um. What gets me there is experiencing this life, experiencing right this earth, this planet, the people around me, the things I interact with, the things that I learn, and not things that I don't really have control over. If if what gets someone there is to believe and hardcore preach about something that you can't see, hear, touch, smell, okay, and have no control over, then you still get to live that life, and you got there, and by there, I mean your end of the life. It's just I'm not going to do that because I think that at the end of the life, that's that's sure. all she wrote. Right. I mean, I'm I'm never <laughs> and I'll say this time and time again. I'm never going to shit on somebody for having a belief. No, um, ever. We, don't, we don't do that here. The only time that I ever take issue with believers are when they try and force it down my throat or force it down the legislation's throat. That's the only time I'll ever stand up and say, all right, you need a you're overstepping your bounds. But well, we can what well, we crave is like. intellectual debate over why we think we why we think something's right or you know why we think this makes sense um the control part is is where everybody gets turned off everybody gets turned off yeah so um, absolutely yeah. Yeah, well unless unless you're on the side that's in control then you're loving it then you have no integrity boy you ain't got no integrity <laughs> at all let me tell you something Come on. Yeah, whatever gets you through the day, though, I'm not going to shit on you as long as you're keeping it to yourself. That's fine. Yeah, definitely. But this is why, like, man, I just... At some point, if we could just... And I think if we could do it with me, you, and Caleb, it'd be so fascinating. Um, just sit down with someone who would be willing to... That's the, that's the problem in this day and age. Everybody can live in their echo chamber because... You don't have to choose to actually engage in discussion with people who disagree with you. But man, if we could just get someone who's super zealot, super religious in front of us, who would like record with us and just talk with us, that would be freaking awesome. That would be. It would be an interesting conversation for sure. Would, I tr well, because I don't know. I trust. Um, I trust me, you and Caleb to be able to respectfully engage someone in dialogue, no matter who they are, and. I think me, you, and Caleb are very sharp on our wits about how to ask questions to reveal why people truly feel the way they do. Mm. Um, so it'd just be interesting to me to have someone sit in front of me and tell me, 
you know, I do believe in the afterlife. Well, why? Like what motivates you? What pushes you to believe that? Oh, well, I, this thing I read in the Bible. Well, what pushes you to, to what really makes you think that the Bible is the word of God? Like what, and, I, and, 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 and not do it in a way where it's like, I think you're wrong. There's no evidence, but just do it in a way that's like, no, seriously. Like why, what is it about you that makes you believe that? Because coming from someone who doesn't understand that it's fascinating to me.